China, many SMEs in the agriculture sector, they know what to sell their products in the internet. They know what to uh, go on the website and search for information. They just walk to the market, they just bring their products. So there is no digital mindset. So this is something that we need to create for this digital mindset for small behaviors. The third challenge is lack of technology mindset. Some people have access to the internet, but they don't feel like they want to bring innovation or technology to their work process. In the agriculture sector, you, know, you can bring all sorts of uh, big data analysis. You can use the computer and so there's a lack of digital mindset and there's a lack of technical, technological mindset. The fourth key challenge is the lack of the best so that you see it is really documented. They talk to the neighbors, they talk to their boss, they talk they talk to their cooperatives, but they don't talk to the internet. So this is something that we have to change. Of course, of course uh, limited funds is a... Yes. And Chinese people should know it. Now, just something that occurred last night. People were saying, what do we do with uh, PowerPoints in China? And I said, uh, for Australia, you just use the same one. Of course, that virtually fits. And most people think that Australia got its three-pin PowerPoint from China. But it's exactly the opposite. China got its three-pin PowerPoint from Australia. And you can check that out because for seven years, China paid an Australian company the, the uh, rights, etc., to be able to produce and use that PowerPoint before they bought the Australian company. But that's a little bit like how it should happen. All right? Other things. What about Wi-Fi and the internet? People don't know that the real discoveries about it were made in Australia. And you may not have had Wi-Fi, for example, for a long time, except that Australia made that sort of discovery, the CSIRO. There are other things. Um, in every place that you have hospitals, uh, places that are, in fact, producing food, etc., you have something called an atomic absorption spectrometer. That is where you fire atoms through uh, processes of uh, things like chemicals, and the bouncing back of those atomic particles tell you what is the composition of the 
stuff passing through. So you will not have mass production of uh, food sampling, uh, medicine sampling, those sorts of things. Again, if you just look at the current time of the developments that have taken place with such things as uh, people who have um, diseases such as uh, cancer, uh, Australia is one of the major cancer research places, and at the present time there are about six or seven major breakthroughs in cancer. Now, if you take also things like food, uh, natural foods, we have people on our team uh, doing that, and the natural food side, you know, kungwa that you have, the bitter melon, um, University of New South Wales, and one of the um, um, uh, one of the universities in China is, is working on this. So there are just many, many things. But I why have you got someone who is low light talking about that? And that's because it's a little bit deceptive. My great great grandfather was one of the first American trade commissioners to Beijing. My grandfather was the person who um, structured or, or who uh, made the peace agreement between Japan and China in Jiangxi Province in 1938. So, what you see is not always what you get. But what I wanted to say was that our group, we have a couple of people there who are strongly and passionate about overcoming this cross-cultural type difference. And that's what they work upon because that's one of the major factors. Now another thing that I think is very important is that Australia has always addressed things um, that are important to China. For example, in the 1960s, now some, some people in China are not even aware, but there were some 30 million people that died in China from a big famine. Um, that was stacked in the Western world, didn't learn about it for a while, or I think they would have been more sympathetic. But Australia in the 1960s developed the types of products for farming to overcome those problems of famine because it was shortages of food and things like that that were there. So Australia brought short stemmed rice, short stemmed wheat, rustless rice, rustless wheat to China. And these sorts of things boosted rice production in China uh, by about nearly 50% <coughs> and consequently um, Cities were able to feed themselves. But there are many more things than that. I can't go into it in great, great detail, but you will find that there are many types of things that um, uh, people in uh, China and Southeast Asia will be surprised that Australia has led in technology. And this is the message that I wanted to give you. Australia undersells its development whereas it should in fact sell more. And the combination that we can do with places like Xinjiang and places in Southeast Asia should mean that what we produce in innovation and technology, which we've been doing all the time, can combine with your countries, with your cities, to develop what is uh, the strong points on both sides. That is, China and Xinjiang will produce more and can market better globally. And that way I think that both sides will improve very significantly. Thank you.
点是当空切是吧？
In 2007, we invented the technology, what we call ALPD. It's called Advanced Laser Phosphor Technology. So um, a lot of companies, if you're familiar or you have some idea about what the display or projector business in general, you, you're going to see a lot of projectors using uh, laser phosphor technology these days. So everybody is moving laser. So Apple Products is actually the original inventor of the technology. Um, and um, you know we can do something like that. So this is um, just one example. You know it's very simple, like four, four, only four characters. But you can do a lot more than you know complicated solutions. More than that. And then what is the range of this laser? Uh, what do you mean the the range? Can you project this? Oh, yeah. 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 People don't even know what the laser is. It's kind of a two cutting edge. So, until like, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think until probably 2007 or something. You know, it started to like really sell. I think uh, for, for this one, for example, this, this particular TV, I think we sold about 100,000 in China. In China, in China. Already about 100,000. Um, I think uh, the team of Michelle is also the team of Michelle. Yes. So, okay, so this is a 4K TV uh, or a, you know, what, no matter what you call it. So it's a 4K laser TV, laser, uh, yeah, this is a 4K uh, laser, ultra short uh, laser projector. So we sell it in a bundle. So this is a, t uh, this is a laser um, projector to be able to screen. Okay, the screen is 100 inch. Uh, this particular, I think this is uh, 120. It goes up to maximum 150 inch now. Which doubles the size of the TV that you have in the living room, I suppose. Right? So this is this is one of the biggest advantage of using laser TV um, because of size. For 100 inch TV, I think the Samsung 100 inch TV is selling about uh, maybe 5,000 US dollars or something like that. So this one, the 4K solution, bundling the screen that we're selling in China, online price is uh, 4,500. Oh, 4,500 US dollars. That's already the most advanced 4K, like excellent color and also the, the screen and everything put it together. Yeah. With the speaker and everything. The speaker is inside, so you don't have to. Uh, the 1080p, by the way, the 1080p is something around 20, uh, 20 no, $2,000. So the 4K is double that price, is $4,500. That's your wholesale price or retail price? Retail. It's like the end user price, where you can find on Amazon or or Kingdom or you know Tmall, you know all that. So this is what we sell. So before, uh, problem with TV. One of the problem with laser TVs is a lot of people kind of reject the idea of using a projector in the living room because they think the color is not good, which is true, which is fact. I mean, before Apple products, the color is not really good. Right, it's the color, you pay a lot of money for a projector, you know, 2K, 4K, but it still it has to be very far back from the, 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 the wall or the screen that you project, and you don't get very good color. But now we have solved the problem. Now this is not very, like, space consuming, it's only this distance, and you already have a 120 inch screen there. So, I mean, a lot of the walls, I, I don't know, but you know, I've lived in the United States, I used to live in the US, I lived, uh, I lived in China for a long time. My wall in my living room is kind of wasted. I mean, what can you put? It's shelf, right? I mean, this thing is like, you know, really just, just that thing. You can it on the wall, and you got this, this neat little thing here, and it has this, you know, gigantic uh, screen by there. So, yeah. Can you connect to like, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, in China we team up with Xiaomi, so it's an uh, Android system, kind of an operation, yeah, yeah, operation system, their OS there, but uh, in the overseas market, of course, you can do all the, you know, Netflix or, or um, you know, Apple TV kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, like that, so, yeah. So it's required, for example, in China, it's required to, for every classroom to have one of these, no matter it's a, like a direct wire or, or, or you know, a touchscreen TV. 
But the TV, we really don't recommend people to use the TV. Because really it's harmful for your eyesight. It's like direct light output. But for projectors, this is reflective, okay? So it doesn't it doesn't fatigue your eyes. Yeah. Really. So this is you know much safer for your eyes. Yes, yes. Yeah, right, right. This is like the ultra short throw. Uh, there's no shallow. I mean, because the, the distance is very uh, close to the wall. I mean, if I'm the lecturer, if I'm walking around like in front of the whiteboard, there's no shadow whatsoever. Before it was like this, but uh, no, not not anymore. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. It, it, before, I think it was like back here, and the mm. teachers were like really annoyed. I mean, oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, but now it's like really close to the, to the whiteboard, um, and the teacher are comfortable, and it's just uh, like a demonstration for right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, let's go to the... Let's go to the show. Customize or tailor make this content for us. Okay. You have to, I have to draw your attention to all the details. What kind of picture, what kind of image you want to show on each pillar? What kind of picture, what kind of image you want to show on each step? It's all customized. Okay, so it has very restricted light control. So uh, one part is not supposed to be brighter than the others. Um, it has to create very precisely a very uniform uh, image to you know for the whole thing. Um, you know all that. It's all the details. It's either like a surface. This is surface one. This is surface two. Right, and there is a really clear. Yeah, like mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, what kind of image you want to put here, what kind of image you want to put there. Um, you can see all the lenses are like, you know, in each like, um, area, in the area on the wall, on the, on the, on the, on the gate. Um, so this is, uh, this is all the, you know, the details that we have to do to. So about this forbidden, I have to spend a few more words about the forbidden city project. The Forbidden City for, for the for the user, which is Forbidden City. They don't care about projectors, okay? Let's be honest, they don't care about projectors. What they care about is their building. Right? Laser is very harmful light source. It has a lot of the enormous UV damage. It's gonna damage the building for you. So they're very hesitated for using laser technology to light up the building. The reason why they don't have any of the light show in the past 300 years, this is the first first time that the building is open at night in the past 300 years. Never open at night. Never open at night. Sorry? This year only? Yeah, this is yeah, the first time this year. This is the first time ever that the building is open at night. So we use the, use the yeah, the house, the Forbidden City. So, the, the, the special thing about aquaponics, I think the process took like three months for them to over them to go over all the details about our technology and to feel comfortable using our technology, is the color, the color you see here on the building, on whatever, you know, on the screen you see, it's not from the laser, it's produced by the phosphor. The color is from the phosphor, so there's no, no UV damage at all. It won't damage any of the artifact, any of the building, any of the structure. So that's why, you know, the Forbidden City at last chose only Apple Fries, because we're the only one in the market who can do it, really. So this is like the whole process. They feel then feel comfortable of using this technology. Wow. Well, with, uh, with the Forbidden City, mm -hmm. not flat surfaces, but other surfaces now. Right, yeah. right. The image still projects reasonably well. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to have special software to make sure that you take the right gradient, for example? Yes. That looks as though. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. It's a, we it's also have it on our Opera House. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. For both the uh, uh, Western New Year and Chinese New Year, right, they have right. very beautiful yes, yes, things yes. and things on many buildings we have also. In, Do you know in who, who did that? I'm not sure. It's Barco. Barco is using our late same light source. Okay. We're the supplier. Is it 
uh, in Australia. Australia. This is in That's Australia. The, the, the we, we have had it for quite a number of years now. Right. But I can't tell you about the damage, but I know that, uh, yeah, they would be concerned. And with, if you have pure laser...